Go, go, go. Okay. Okay, cool. Now we are live and good evening, everyone. I'm very excited to welcome you on our webinar is software testing with Alexei Vinagradov. And many of you know about Alexei. Uh, he, is, he has huge experience in software testing and software development and quality assurance. So uh, he is working for more than 20 years and has a lot of things to tell us. And Hi. welcome, Alexei, and thanks a lot for accepting my invitation. I'm very uh, happy to see you as our guest. And uh, first of all, I'd like to ask you to tell us a little bit yourself and uh, how you started your career in software testing and what uh, you are doing now. Okay, um, Aram, thank you for inviting me. So uh, I am actually uh, and German consultant, if you want to say, uh, to, to put it this way, I living in Germany for more than 20 years. And actually I have started uh, working uh, in Germany uh, and also uh, started in Germany. Uh, but I am originally from uh, Belarus, from Minsk. Uh, at the moment, there are some uh live action there but okay we will not talk about it tomorrow at all uh today at all so um i've actually started my career in as um of course first as a student i had some student job in the university in um uh on uh, uh computer science um uh, how do they call it? Dep department just helping out let's say and then uh my first and then consequently second and third jobs were as a, a software developer. So uh, I've learned on this way Java, also J, uh, JEE, it was uh, Java Enterprise Edition, uh, and uh, also uh, uh, th those times um, we had a simple JavaScript, not uh, um, it wasn't used as uh, deeply and as much as uh, these days uh, in software development, but in case it were my uh, also major programming languages. And um, then one day I've actually learned for me um, software testing. And uh, I guess, uh, so I've started my career. My very first job was uh, 19... Uh, 98 and uh, probably I first realized that uh, a tester is uh, actually uh, could be a separate job from, uh, from uh, what we were doing. So actually we have tested as software developers uh, always, but um, I, I, I guess I didn't even realize that uh, uh, a tester is uh, uh, could be a separate job description until uh, early um, um, 2000s, like uh, 2002 or the thousand, uh, 2003, when I was helping out in um, a project, uh, Delphi project. Uh, it was a programming language, which is now pretty rare, pretty, pretty rare. Um, and uh, they needed help in testing it. And so um, I've, uh, in this time, I've read a lot uh, in the internet about testing. I also uh, then um, realized that there are some certification on testing. That was also the time when I made my ASTQB certification, it was, I, I guess, two, uh, 2004. And uh, so uh, in these years, I was doing um, software development, like programming, uh, really programming in Java for one project and testing. And then later also doing test management. We had like a small, a, a, we had a small team uh, with about like five testers. 
uh, test management for just the normal manual testing of uh, custom software. It was actually a desktop application, standalone application for um, German post services. Okay. And um, as uh, time advanced, I was also doing uh, programming and testing uh, together along with, with uh, on different projects. And um, until I guess it was um, around 2009, so now it's more than 10 years when um, I met a guy who was a, actually a pro, one former project manager uh, on, on one of my uh, former projects. Uh, and uh, with, I talked to him and I, I, I was telling him that I'm doing um, actually programming uh, as a as a program as a as a full time also developer and another in other times I was also doing uh, like also full time testing so uh, from time to time I was uh, just changing the projects and uh, he told me that uh, in his opinion is better idea to be an expert on one topic whereas you must understand uh, programming. And uh, testing are very huge topics. You cannot even be ever a testing expert or uh, a programming expert in general, in my opinion, because it's it's still too wide area. Yeah. So even then, you must uh, you 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 could specialize and be perhaps expert on some subtopics of it. So, and he uh, told me that uh, uh, perhaps it, uh, I could. Um, Think about uh, just choosing one, um, um, uh, uh, just one of these two things and do it really very deeply and professionally, and uh, perhaps to let the second uh, uh, the second thing go. Yeah. So it was actually very difficult for me uh, at the beginning uh, because I was. Um, an, my opinion i was like seasoned um, java developer i had also at that time as you can see uh, around 10 years of java programming experience so um i had um, at that time i was already self-employed so i was working uh, for myself uh i was working on, pro on projects in germany and i had um, um got uh, pretty much queries uh, for either uh, for for both for both um, testing and for programming projects, so I had uh, to be strong and <laughs> at the beginning um, and uh, actively reject the projects with descriptions that would perfectly match to my background, like everything that I can. But I would say no because, uh, as you have probably understood, I've picked up testing because um, I thought uh, it makes me much more fun. And I must say, perhaps there, is, there are um, also differences in uh, uh, different regions in different countries on how the testers are paid uh, if you compare with uh, how the programmers are paid. And luckily for us in Germany, there is uh, almost no difference um, uh, in, uh, in, in payments in um, your wages if you're working as test or developer. So it was not uh, that hard decision if I do something that I love much more and getting for it much less money, uh, but it was almost equal, uh, equal payment. Like um, I was actually trying to sell my, like my, my time, my hours, and I guess I'm, I just uh, uh, didn't change my hourly rate as a programmer, and I went with probably the same. Uh, it could be just a, a couple of percent, which I could uh, probably uh, um, came down on my on my hourly rate just to uh, to uh, stay with the field, which was much more fun for me. Okay. And um, okay, so since 2009, I have started to um, uh, working uh, 
almost uh, 100 percent on testing. So now it is inclu including test automation. So I think in the last five, six, seven years, uh, uh, five, six, seven years, I am programming also uh, quite a bit. Yes, but it's uh, I'm I'm still I was um, probably never again on a project like uh, a programmer. But uh, uh, from time to time, um, I've uh, uh, of course uh, test automation is also uh, coding and programming. But I've also done from time to time a bit of bug fixing, or I don't know. Uh, perhaps I've written also a couple of uh, very small features, which I, I I saw. Okay, if the the programmers are a bottleneck and I had time, uh, why not to help? You know, now we are working. The most of you probably also working in kind of agile uh, teams, and uh, um, we are. Uh, we are trying, it doesn't work as good uh, uh, every time, but we are trying to be one team. So if if I ha have time and can help my programmers colleagues, even writing uh, like uh, uh, programming features, I could easily do it, of course. But uh, in many cases, um, you, you know, uh, we also have a lot to do as, a, as testers. Uh, okay, so now, Back to to your question, you see, it uh, takes me. Uh, I'm sometimes I speak, <laughs> I speak much, sometimes perhaps too much, but okay, it's 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 me. So <laughs> sorry, sorry about it. Um, so um, um, now you you can see it's, uh, this way. I'm working around uh, 15 years uh, for my uh, now um, as a as a consultant in Germany for myself. And uh, changing the pro uh, changing the projects, uh, the most of the projects are either manual testing or test management. It was uh, like in, in early years. Now it's more. It's almost uh, all of my project has something to do with automation, test automation, coaching about test automation, um, uh, doing it hands on. And uh, my customers are also mostly uh, German uh, enterprises. So. It's like uh, Deutsche Post, Deutsche Telekom, German Post, German uh, Telekom, uh, banks, uh, insurances. Uh, yes, and uh, typical project is uh, 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 takes uh, some something between like six months and uh, twenty months. So it's not. Uh, it's mostly not uh, a job which is. Uh, done in a week or in, in a couple of days. OK, now I'm done. OK, <laughs> yeah, great. So thanks a lot for telling us about yourself and about your career path. It was very interesting. And you mentioned that you are uh, doing both programming and coding as a programmer and testing as a tester. And I think that uh, that's one of the wonderful uh, things that is happening uh, that in the teams, uh, people are gathering as a T-skilled uh, people and who can uh, do testing, who can code, who can review, do code reviews and etc. And that's uh, very great. And now you are a consultant and that sounds very cool. And I'm sure that you are a great one. And can you tell us about uh, consultants? So what are you doing as a consultant? How you are helping the businesses? and what are the benefits to companies to hire, hire consultants? Yes, and that's actually also an interesting regional question about consultants in Germany. And unfortunately, I don't know, I don't think it's very bad, but unfortunately, uh, the word consultant is in uh, Germany uh, somehow degraded because it's uh, it is used in a very wide um, variety of situations. So in German, a consultant um, is a berater. It's uh, just the, the uh, translation. And in many cases, uh, everyone is a consultant or berater <laughs> if uh, he is working externally for uh, like uh, for the other company. And uh, the consultant can be also just a normal employee in some other company, or it could be a kind of independent like me, like self-employed. Self so everyone is consultant. 
Uh, it's also, uh, perhaps there are some jokes about that uh, sometimes, I think it was in the USA, that everyone was a manager, like, uh, I don't know, uh, yes, a manager for, uh, for cleaning up stuff and uh, I don't know. So it's uh, perhaps uh, similar in Germany, actually, everyone who is not working on project, <laughs> but working for uh, some, some other, uh, who, who could uh, not, not working on product, on product, uh, but working for some other company on, on perhaps a product for another company, he's automatically consultant. So I think it's different in USA, where is uh, like uh, out staff uh, just so actually in many in many cases it's just an out actually once uh, out staff employee or something like that out just an out staff yeah. uh, person yes and in Germany it would be consultant I think in uh, in USA it it would be different yes. So, um, <laughs> so actually in Germany, it's not uh, as cool uh, to be a consultant in, gen in general, but um, <laughs> in my late, uh, latest project, yeah, uh, and uh, also another fun, fun fact is that coach in uh, uh, Germany is also, is um, um, the word coach is working differently as uh, uh, different as in, in yeah. other countries. Because, okay, if consultant is everybody, then coach they must be higher, yes? And in um, uh, the typical uh, coach, uh, like by definition, like uh, in Wikipedia, I don't know, it's a person who don't tell you what to do, who, uh, who, doesn't, uh, who doesn't tell you what to do, but who ask you questions, helping you to understand what to do. So if I'm oh, yeah. working as a in Germany, I'm not doing this, unfortunately, because <laughs> <laughs> in Germany, a coach is actually a consultant <laughs> <laughs> who is telling you yeah, what to do. Funny. So it's uh, like uh, everything is going. Uh, so they okay, of course, uh, uh, a person who uh, persons who also ask you questions they are probably also coaches because uh, they don't have any other words for it. But um, because coach, it could be a person. Uh, who tells you what to do like it could uh, so typically i think in uh, other countries consultant is a person who tells you what to do who knows his uh, uh, his thing and who is uh, consulting you in telling you what to do <laughs> okay so actually i was a coach in a few projects in a few projects of my customers trying to actually uh, bring uh, testing and test automation uh, in agile projects on how I think it, it must work. I'm actually uh, there on the same track as uh, Michael Bolton. Hope you all heard, uh, heard uh, to his interview with Aram <laughs> too. And yeah. uh, okay, this also with many other uh, now popular people, I share this, uh, this the, the, the same understanding of working like working as a team. Don't working as silos like don't having these walls between testers and de and uh, developers actually i also call developer everyone so as a tester i'm also a developer because uh, you know in scrum there is a product owner a scrum master and a development team that actually yeah. for me automatically <laughs> um, gives uh, gives the right to to call every business analyst every designer and every tester who is working uh, uh, full time in a Scrum team is automatically developer because he's a part of development team. So not uh, only programmers are developers, uh, but also uh, testers. So I also try to to uh, emphasize it and try to distinguish, like say, okay, if I want to uh, to uh, say uh, a word for people who code, I t I call him a programmer. And uh, the other are, for example, testers, but they are all developers because uh, they uh, um, make major contribution. I think everyone in Scrum team should make a major contribution in development of the product. So they are developers in, our, in, in the fact at the end. Okay, so I think it, uh, yes. <laughs> so I'm sorry to disappoint you if uh, you thought that uh, uh, con consulting is uh, very important and high as a, a high title could be in some countries, but in Germany, it's very, very common. 
Okay, so it was uh, just surprising news for me because I thought that consulting is much more different. <laughs> so uh, yeah, about speaking the uh, coaches, I remember uh, when I was attending from gathering once, yeah, it was like five or four years ago. And there was a guy who was telling how to become a coach. And he was saying, okay, when people are starting asking you some questions, you need to give free answers. Why you are asking me this question? What you are waiting from me to answer you when you are asking this question? And I don't remember the first one, but it was a kind of this, and it was very funny. And I was like, oh, okay. So coaches are just giving you questions and nothing more. <laughs> and yes. so uh, in fact, yeah, it, uh, it is. Okay, uh, so uh, Alexei, you worked in various industries like banking companies, telecom companies, e-commerce companies, and etc. So uh, my question is, uh, what do you think about domain expertise? Is it a plus to, uh, for tests or to have domain knowledge? Uh, and uh, if it's a plus, how it can help a tester uh, in uh, during the work? Yes, uh, yes, of course, of course. The, I think in general it's uh, pretty pretty uh, easy. Everything you you can do extra is a is a plus. But I think this domain knowledge is essential and very important actually for testers. And in my opinion, <laughs> actually not even for testers, but also for prog for the programmers, um, because um, you know. So uh, especially as a tester, you need to um, work much out of the box. So uh, like the reason is the, for me pretty simple. Actually, actually not not only as a tester, also as a programmer, it's the very the very same reason. Uh, it is. Uh, the thing is that um, uh, you will probably getting uh, some tasks from your uh, don't know product managers or product owners, which are getting their tasks from their bosses. Yes, and uh, sometimes this uh, chain is uh, also much longer. Yes, and on every stage there could be communication problems. So. Um, I don't actually don't know how do you call this game in English. In German, it is Stille uh, Post. Uh, in Russian, it is Isporchene Telefon, broken phone, or in German, it is uh, translated. <laughs> yeah, broken phone. Uh, um, silent, uh, silent uh, post, like when um, the chain and you are giving, um, you are normally whispering something to the next, to the next, to the next, and you will see that in the end it will something very very different uh, from what was in the beginning and the, the same thing is uh, uh, is happening uh, very very often in software projects so um, um, oh, it is not too easy to spe specify uh, the task um, in complete and uh, right and you know not uh, um, not ambiguous way that uh, uh, go down uh, to the developer as a task and then later perhaps to test uh, to check it. Um, yes, so um, there are also a very high costs of misunderstanding. Yes, you, you can easily understand if some of the big manager uh, has failed to communicate his idea to a product owner and product owner uh, just um, um, created some tasks, some uh, wrote some user story, which was already wrong understood. Yes, and then programmers had uh, developed it, and then tester has tested it as, as written, yes, as they all understood it. And then it was deployed, and only then uh, the big boss has uh, have seen it in production and uh, shook his head and uh, uh, cried, what have you developed, yes? Uh, uh, so it's a uh, cost, oh, yeah. uh, vast amount of money to fix uh, this kind of things. Yes. And it uh, could happen at every stage. It could uh, be miscommunication between product owner and programmers and even between program and tester. So on every level and domain knowledge helps to understand the problems earlier 
on the so just to have a, a domain knowledge and critical thinking of course so it's not enough to think okay actually hmm, i know it's the other way but but okay he's my boss if he's telling me uh, to do this then i will do it uh, in any way yes so actually a good tester and programmer so it's not just for tester he um, is using his critical thinking and uh, asking, uh, he's trying to, um, to uh, comprehend, to understand why we are actually doing this. Yes. And sometimes if something uh, looks uh, for, uh, fishy for him because of uh, his uh, domain knowledge, he could uh, understand that uh, something is here strange or, uh, or the, on the other hand, Perhaps it's not strange, but we could do it even better with uh, like um, the same effort or um, the same costs. Uh, then as critical thinker, he could ask, uh, he could uh, communicate it. Uh, there are all uh, in Scrum that typical like, like backlog grooming meetings where you can uh, uh, discuss uh, uh, this very kind of things. Yes. And it could save a lot of uh, time and money for uh, projects for people so um yes uh, uh, okay if you are critical yes on the other hand if you are a very critical thinker but without domain knowledge yeah it could also work so you just will re-ask re everything which you see just because you're a critical thinker but uh without that much domain knowledge um okay you're just um um yeah like um uh, walking in the dark and trying to guess what is right and what is wrong so domain knowledge helps to do it faster to do it more, def uh, more effective effectively yes um, okay i hope i have answered your question yeah yeah i've answered a question you know with the uh, examples and that's great uh, thanks a lot so uh coming to automation that you are doing so you're experts in end-to-end -end automation so let's talk about it a little bit so uh, what is end-to-end uh, -end automation and why and when it's needed and today there are many many tools and options to choose for end-to-end -end automation so, uh, i can share your knowledge and thoughts about it uh, why it's needed uh, what to choose and on what we need to pay attention when we are choosing these uh, tools and uh, languages for example or some, uh, anything that we are choosing uh, for end-to-end -end automation mm -hmm. okay so um to start with um let's talk about end-to-end -end, uh, and end-to-end -end testing and to end test automation uh, so most commonly, um, end-to-end -end automation is, uh, and excuse me, end-to-end -end testing is uh, when you compile and build and deploy your application completely, or actually pragmatically saying almost completely. So everything uh, which is um, um, which is used in your a uh, whole process of using this, uh, this application must be already installed. Yes. So, um, uh, and actually I, uh, this uh, remark um, can tell us that there are a lot of different kinds of uh, applications. Some of them are, for example, uh, desktop applications, some of them are web application uh, which is browser application which is uh, at the moment the uh, most probably the most popular part there are also mobile applications uh, nowadays uh, probably iot uh, like internet of things so your um, washing machine could be also an application yes and um, so if you are testing end to end that means actually you are working as an end user of it with all systems that you need uh, to use it uh, also insto uh, properly ins installed yes and uh, saying that i would also say that i'm probably an expert um, in uh, um, browser end-to-end -end test automation and uh, in not as much in for example mobile application test automation or 
uh, Internet of Things uh, application or desktop application, uh, you, you see already that even end-to-end -end automation could be uh, uh, very, very broad and, uh, and, and you cannot be expert on all things, uh, obviously. So, um, so then, um, okay, um, the other, so this, uh, this, um, this term of um, end uh, to end testing or uh, test automation comes from um, so called test pyramid, where we have additional layers of um, unit testing and integration testing. Yes, uh, to differentiate from end to end testing. For example, in unit testing, uh, uh, probably um, just a small unit of um, of uh, your application which are tested at uh, there is uh, in most cases even nothing is installed and deployed and in, by integration test it could be that's also different it could be also um, uh, modules uh, which are also not installed it also could be partly installed parts of your uh, also parts of your application which are actually installed but not the complete application yeah so end to end is when everything is installed and um, it uh, in, um, in on one hand, it is very um, convenient, like to test the fully um, in, uh, an application which is fully installed, because uh, you would probably um, find the, the problems which are actually problems. And um, yes, you if you let's say if it would be possible to test everything end to end then and you would find uh, no uh, bugs uh, then you could probably you would probably say that okay this application is quite fine yeah so um but unfortunately uh, on the other hand there are also some disadvantages of test and -end. uh one of them is that um, um especially for automation this kind of testing is much much slower uh, then, for example, unit testing. Uh, for example, a typical test uh, which you can run with a typical tools like Selenium on a web browser would take something between 10 seconds and sometimes even a minute. And um, a typical test with uh, uh, a typical unit test is um, on the same on the same scale. It would be like uh, around uh, between thousand a thousand and ten thousands of tests every second so it's a very huge difference in performance also uh, uh the the problems uh, which you are which you are uh, finding with end-to-end -end testing and test automation are not that easy to localize because you know uh, application is completely installed and when you are um, using your like uh, web uh, web interface or in your browser um, and uh, clicking the button uh, in the background, there, uh, there is much uh, work uh, will be done. For example, something uh, will be processed in your browser. Something will, uh, then probably a call will be, or more than one call, network calls will be pushed to your server. Then this server could call for some internal database or third party services, yes? And uh, every everywhere in this chain, uh, an error could happen. And probably in most cases, if something bad is happening, you will just see on your uh, interface and on your UI some some kind of error message. Uh, not even um, in, in many cases, it's not even well understandable what uh, this error message. Like you have probably seen uh, error five hundred or error. 400 uh, and uh, or just we have some technical issues please uh, try it again later so you don't know what is happening and it takes much more time to localize the problem yes uh, and of course if you are testing just one unit and something is broken uh, you already know the problem is in this, in this unit obviously yes there are other problems on the other hand with a unit test yeah for example there are very um, there are many funny pictures on the internet um, which are titled like unit, uh, unit tests are fast but uh, integration tests are not when okay every small piece of uh, of work is working fine but if you put them all together nothing works it's also quite typical for software project yes so 
Um, now, uh, back, back to, to tools which uh, we are using. So also let's, um, so I could probably uh, speak for half an hour if I would uh, just um, try to um, uh, speak about every possible tool for every possible end-to-end uh, um, -end test automation, desktops and mobile and, and so on. So let's, for example, focus on, uh, on uh, what is uh, the most popular, uh, probably still uh, web applications. And for web applications nowadays, we have um, also plenty, of course, plenty of tools. The most popular at the moment. Um, one thing is Selenium. Selenium is uh, actually not a tool, uh, but uh, the whole ecosystem of uh, tool and tools and libraries and standards to um, control the browser. But it is also, it is typically often used for testing. And also Selenium itself is a low level uh, instrument. So it's a low level library and it's actually pretty inconvenient to write tests using just plain pure Selenium uh, bindings, libraries. Yes, yeah? so uh, there are for almost every programming language, there are uh, 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 frameworks and uh, libraries, so-called wrappers which are using Selenium under the hood, but which are making the actual process of uh, writing test, of uh, writing your testing script much, much easier. And for example, for Java, I can re very recommend uh, Selenide. Um, actually, I am also on this project as a uh, like a developer, tester and evangelist. I'm evan evangelist. I'm uh, making a lot of talks about uh, selenide you can find them in youtube uh, pretty easily so it's uh, also one of uh, the maturest uh, libraries it's uh, almost uh, i don't know nine or ten years old uh, which uh, helps you uh, to concentrate to focus uh, to, to focus on your on writing the test so every technical uh, issues which uh, technical um, challenges that you have and you're using pure selenium is basically solved under the hood for you so you then can write tests with it just like uh, uh, the same way as you define them for manual execution so probably you're opening some page then you're selecting some elements okay it's probably the only technical part which cannot be um make much more easier than it is in uh, like selenium cc selector or xpass selectors uh, still um selenite has also a, a, a nice library of helper methods or so-called um syntax sugar uh to um to write very typical selections which are much more readable and precise and working interface like uh, find some element by text uh or even by some i don't know by 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 color on uh, or, or so on uh, and so on so on so um you are probably opening some page and you are locating some element and do typically actions there are not as many actions as you uh, as you probably know it's click and the right click and sometimes hover like a mouse over action and then you type your text and it's probably all and the, the most of uh, so 95 to 99% are probably clicks and types uh, in, in your applications. So you're doing this action and then in some, in some cases, especially at the end, you are asserting. And also Selenite had a very, uh, very nice, very easy to use uh, library of uh, assertions or typical assertions uh, to check if some element is, uh, is visible on the screen. If some element has some specific text, if some uh, element has some specific styling, like for most cases it is um, um, like color of the element, yes? Or if it is enabled or disabled or uh, such things, yes? And that's probably it. And you uh, have a few design patterns like page object and uh, you don't need uh, uh, no more for, for writing your test and you can, you can just uh, write your test like uh, top to the bottom with the same 
as you as you uh, code as you as you uh, put your manual tests descriptions. Okay, so that's for Java, and then uh, there are of course also for Selenium a lot of libraries, uh, different libraries also for Java and for JavaScript. Um, uh, I don't have my favorites there. Like uh, just uh, tell you a few names: WebDriver, I/O. Uh, there's some popular protractor and some other things. Um, and there are also Python libraries and uh, Ruby libraries and uh, practically for any programming language you, you, uh, you want to write your test with Sel Selenium, yes? So my um, um, recommendation is not to use uh, plain Selenium. You, can, you could use it for just for learning purposes to look, uh, to look under the hood how, how it is uh, actually uh, um, um, programmed I was working under the hood but you are good to go with with the wrappers uh, uh, of your choice so uh, then in the last time it's probably the last few years there are a different um, tools which are using actually uh, similar uh, similar engines uh, like selenium but it's not selenium and these tools are, for example, Cypress and Puppeteer, Puppe, uh, Cypress and Puppeteer, uh, which are uh, quite popular at the moment. Uh, they are both um, JavaScript. Uh, yeah, yeah, but if I'm mistaken, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Puppeteer is only for uh, Google Chrome, or yes, uh, I it has extensions Chrome. for all other browsers. Yeah. So, yeah. uh, for example, Cypress is at the moment, it was also originally on a Chrome only or Chromium engine only. At the moment, it is supporting Firefox as well. Uh, but Puppety, I think it's still on Chrome only because, so like uh, Selenium, is, um, as, uh, Selenium is a project which tries really uh, to be a web standard and thus be compatible for every, every browser. And it's uh, working uh, the way that as uh, a driver, actual web driver for this browser is a, a responsibility of a, a browser vendor. It has also its advantages and disadvantages. So on the one hand, uh, it is uh, like a standard. So uh, you could actually write your test for every browser on the very same way. And then if the browser vendor has managed to write their drivers correctly, it, it will work for every driver. The problem is that at the moment, not every browser vendor that are Apple for Safari and Google for Chrome uh, or Chrome derivatives, and then Mozilla for Firefox. Yes, so it actually that doesn't work so smooth uh, yet. Yes, so uh, it's theoretically everything is uh, the same and the standard. But practically, uh, it's uh, not uh, the case for every feature. So, uh, and um, for example, the Cypress, uh, he used uh, his own, uh, like, um, his own mechanisms. And uh, Puppety is used the uh, Chrome, Chrome debug protocol. And Chrome debug protocol there is a hint, okay, it's also will, uh, probably only work for Chrome. So that's the reason why Puppety is uh, working only with, uh, with Chrome. So, and recently it was actually uh, this week, yes, it was uh, a few days ago, we had a very nice uh, discussion panel with uh, actually with Cypress and, uh, uh, and the guys from Microsoft, uh, which are developing um, uh, the framework called Playwright. Playwright is actually uh, was um, created on basis of uh, Puppeteer. So uh, I, actually not an expert on the both frameworks, but I, I think they have very similar syntax or probably the same, even the same syntax. And uh, they also extended the Puppeteer. So probably uh, Playwright is um, a more generic Puppeteer who will also, who should also work with other browsers because they've just created some drivers, some also custom drivers for, uh, uh, especially Microsoft, of course, uh, as Microsoft, they created drivers for Edge and probably Internet Explorer, I'm not sure. And uh, also for Firefox and for Safari. 
So it's also an, an attempt to, um, to make uh, an, uh, a comp competitive uh, protocol to uh, Selenium. And uh, okay, uh, so uh, as these protocols uh, are working more natively with the browser, they are in some cases uh, really more e uh, efficient, more fast, yes? So um, I must say, if you're using Cypress and, uh, or uh, for example, Prelight or Papite, you would probably have more compatibility issues as you, if you're working with uh, Selenium. But uh, on the other hand, uh, they could be also much more effective because, okay, as, as they focus on one browser, they will uh, do, uh, they will have uh, more effective time to make the features working well. Yes, and also, for example, Cypress has a very nice feature like UI debugging tool, which actually uh, helped me to fix some of my Selenite tests <laughs> with help of Cypress. Um, uh, using Cypress, uh, like um, Cypress has um, one nice feature. It is a frame-wise um, snapshots of uh, how uh, is your how does your browser look and what is um, uh, the like uh, the DOM state of your browser. Not uh, not even for every second. It's not about the the video, for example, but it's really every after every network request. Or, Okay, let's say almost every network request, they are saving the state okay. of the DOM of the browser on the variables. And sometimes it's, uh, it is uh, actually, um, it happens not so often that you, uh, that you need it at all. So in many cases, you just uh, writing your application and you have no problems. But in some cases, you will, you will see that your, your tests are flaky, like they're almost always, uh, they're good, but sometimes they're failing without obvious reason. And to analyze it, it's uh, really difficult. Sometimes a video could help, and sometimes you can even see it in the video what is going wrong. Yes, and then this uh, cyber uh, cyber tool will help me to see it frame by frame when some uh, very strange request I wasn't even aware of of that some some requests are going around. Um, yes, and they did some uh, minor changes in UI which broke this test, and it was really uh, a question of milliseconds. It wasn't. Uh, you wouldn't never be able to see it on your video. Yes, but after I, I went uh, through it like frame by frame, I saw what the problem is. And if you know what the problem is, you can uh, then easily solve it. And then it's, uh, it doesn't matter if it's Cypress or Playwright and <laughs> Selenite or some other tools, you, uh, you then know how to solve it. Okay, so um, to, um, um, to, um, make a conclusion, the most popular tools uh, for web browser testing at the moment are, in my opinion, Cypress and Selenium with many frameworks, for example, Selenite for, Java's, uh, for Java, uh, and uh, also Puppeteer and um, Playwright for, for JavaScript. And for Python and yeah. Ruby, I not actually that, uh, yeah, I don't know exactly what's uh, the most popular at the moment. Okay. There are also, well, Python, okay, yeah. mention, there are also the completely also uh, like, you know, appropriate, appropriate uh, test old, uh, they are almost all pretty old uh, instruments, but I guess they are still working. Some of them are also using Selenium under the hood, but not all of them. For example, HP, uh, so quick test, prof I think uh, the actual name is quick test professional or something. Uh, it was, uh, I don't know, they changed their names, was a functional tester. I don't, I don't know, they're buying each other every now and then. Uh, okay, like Ranorex or something. I, some of them are using Selenium under the hood and some of them has written their engines on their own. So they are appropriate. Uh, also a pretty large market of them. Okay. Whew. Yeah. Okay. Thanks a lot. So uh, you have gave so many information to our listeners and it was very interesting. I remember when I was using Puppeteer, it was three years ago or four years ago, and it was a little bit hard for me because it was, uh, they were 
just kind of uh, starting this puppeteer and uh, there is no community for helping uh, and there were many uh, issues and I stopped using it but it was very fast and uh, it was uh, very helpful when you are using only one uh, so when you are using only Chrome it was uh, very good and also for Python uh, the most used one if I'm not mistaken is the robot framework that is for behavior driven uh, uh, testing and still it uh, being used uh, by many, many testers. And I think that it's one of the best frameworks that uh, was built. And uh, also I uh, remember the mem in uh, Facebook about the unit tests and integration tests when the doors uh, were uh, next to each other and ones were just opening and the other ones were uh, sl uh, sliding and it was <laughs> very funny. So uh, you talked about automation and I know that you are teaching automation now. Uh, so uh, what uh, are the techniques that you are teaching and who can attend your classes? And also uh, let's combine the questions. So many people are now uh, starting their career in software testing and are willing to know automation. So uh, what do you suggest to them and uh, from where to start, how to find the right courses to attend and etc. Yes, thank you for the question. Very difficult question. <laughs> okay, uh, so, um, yes, actually, um, I think I've started to teach test automation this year. At the moment, I am a part of the project uh, QA.guru. Created Guru. It is uh, at the moment only in Russian. Um, and it's also a pretty new concept uh, to, of uh, how we teach test automation. Uh, so it's also kind of experimental. At the moment, just the second batch of uh, the second course of students, second batch of students is running. And uh, of course, we are trying, trying a lot of things there. So I'm not, uh, of course, I'm not the only teacher there. It's a typical concept of, okay, you're getting like your test automation, not degree, but you are getting your general test automation courses. And actually in this project, I'm only responsible for some uh, uh, selenite, for selenite part and, um, uh, and some also doing some, some basic uh, Java, courses there as well. So as a, uh, at the moment as a test automator, you need to know quite a lot of things. So it's not just about running the tests, but also it's also about uh, reporting. It's also about um, um, uh, continuous integration, about integrating your test into continuous integration cycles. Um, yes. And um, uh, also, I've never missed an opportunity to remind of it. Uh, it's actually the thing that is difficult to learn during uh, software courses, during the courses uh, for uh, software test automators, because it is a thing that the whole team must understand. Yes, let's imagine we have written the perfect uh, um, tests, really the best techniques with the state of the art. And we have integrated them perfectly. They are running every day, I don't know, on every commit, whatever. Every, so everything is fine. But, um, uh, and okay, the, the, the reports uh, which uh, this test are generated are amazing. So they are the best one, <laughs> the best one. But if your team are still working on um, uh, like um, waterfall way, uh, okay, there are some bugs, but we don't have uh, time right now to look at them. We will look at them in the next sprint or uh, whenever the product uh, owner will put them from backlog in, into sprint, then almost everything you have done is was of no, no purpose, no good. So uh, this small non-technical issue of um, processing the results and processing that doesn't mean 
of course that you uh, print your reports and hang there somewhere i don't know on a wall but the processing is that the, the issues that are identified by this test they must be uh, um, responded they must be reacted to um, as soon as possible because the idea of automation one of the benefit of one of the major benefit of automation is a faster response uh, if you are getting this faster response and ignoring it just saying oh okay i don't have time to 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 read it or fix the problem yes let someone else uh, read it and decide it uh, i will do it some somewhere later then you are losing almost the most of it so that's uh, really difficult issues in many many projects so every programmer is uh, happy to learn quickly new framework and write a few tests it's working very well but uh, they uh, many of them don't have this um habit of uh reacting to to the results and uh, in my opinion it's very 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 important so <laughs> okay so um uh, in our courses we actually we cannot um, pull also the team members the developers which are mostly responsible the developers and also the product owners and uh, scrum master and the manager who must remind the developers of reacting to this issue because we cannot pull them in our course <laughs> we actually don't teach uh, this kind of thing but uh, i think we, we also like uh, um, explaining it and the hope that the tester will try to get uh, this kind of stuff to developers and to others yes but we are teaching technically technically how to do uh, uh, things uh, technically uh, good i think there is also um, a thing that is no um, best test or best practices so uh, as a, the main criteria for me is uh, is actually what i'm saying your test much produce uh, must produce uh, regular regular that means um, uh, CI, uh, ci integration uh, well readable that means reports that uh, that uh, will help you to get to to the roots of the issue easier output yes they sh should also be like maintainable and stable yes and uh, they uh, must provide enough inf uh, they must provide information which can be processed yes so actually much, of course it's not bad mm -hmm. if you uh, uh, is able to write more tests and more they will identify more issues than your developers uh, will uh, be able to look into and to fix but you know this is this will be again this uh, bottleneck problem yeah so if the issues will not be looked into it it will will be uh, no good so there is uh, the criteria is actually you should uh, produce enough stuff for developer to uh, processes and uh, to to fix actually the problems yes so if the situation is that uh, uh, the developer uh, the programmers are waiting on your testing uh, then you you could do it better but if developers has no time then okay it's probably not the best solution to invest even more things in test automation and producing the results which, which nobody will care about yes so uh, we are uh, teaching in uh, this qa guru uh, qa.guru uh, courses we are teaching about um, uh, uh, selenite as framework in uh, java and selenite to write the test then jenkins to uh, do ci so every everyone in this course can install his own jenkins um, can learn to how install it how to configure it and so on how write the jobs that are running uh, regularly uh, then um, we are teaching allure as a reporting engine allure re reports and uh, of course how to integrate this all together also there are some some special um, uh, le lectures about i think selenoids it's about scaling uh, scaling of your testing when you uh, for example really uh, have so many tests that they will they're taking too much time and you want to run them in parallel parallel in different uh, machines or different con perhaps docker containers there are also tools for it so you will get a really broad uh, view of the tools you will get a, um, a lot of homeworks so actually it's also pretty hard course you must do a lot of things 
with your hand yourself. Of course, there are some some helpers, which will help you if you have problems. But it's not uh, the kind of course where you're just watching the videos and then hope uh, uh, to that that something will will stay in your in your in your head. And yeah, so you will will ex actively practicing uh, practicing uh, the things that we are teaching. Okay, uh, and uh, okay, so uh, I think the, as I said, the next page will be probably in October. No, no, exactly, because actually I'm not the organizer myself. I am uh, in the capacity of uh, a men teacher and mentor. So I'm actually also uh, like, uh, yeah, empl not, not employee, but like uh, a part of the course on, but only on on the learning learning part of it, not of organizational stuff. Uh, okay, so that's it. And actually, I also <laughs> uh, I'm dreaming of trying to perhaps um, um, to record some uh, video course uh, for English speaking video course for just this. It would be another also quite popular um, method of teaching where you would just uh, see the videos and you will not get any hands-on exercises and not any homework. So it will be up to you, but it will be easy to easy, easy to watch. Yeah, so there are, I think, uh, there are different people who need different kind of stuff. And some, sometimes uh, such kind of course where do, you don't um, uh, do that much hands-on are also pretty good and actually i must uh, i must tell you i do a lot of them my, for myself because then i actually for example i uh, i'm uh, um, trying to learn the new framework not to be a programmer in it for example react react or i don't know the latest angular i don't want to become a programmer in it so uh, it's enough for me to watch such a course to understand the mechanics of it to see how it differs from other frameworks, which I know, to understand the speci uh, speci perhaps some specific thing about it. Yes, and it's enough. And I find that it's quite uh, quite good that there are there are also much a uh, lot of uh, courses without uh, homeworks. Yes, and okay. So uh, in a different situation, you you could need uh, both kind of these courses. Okay. Okay, and uh, what was uh, was it already the question? Or have I... so, uh, you have covered much of the question. So, uh, what you uh, like to suggest to the people who are starting uh, their career in testing? Uh, to, to the people who are starting their career in testing, yes. So, yeah, um, right. All right. Um, good luck. <laughs> so, I hope that. Uh, your country um, uh, will sooner or later, or perhaps it is already so, the, uh, the tester will not be the first step to being a programmer. Because they, in my opinion, it's just uh, two different uh, state of minds. And I, I think in my opinion, the professional uh, expert programmer would know uh, quite, uh, quite a lot about testing and understand and also practice testing uh, and also a good tester would know quite a lot about uh, technical stuff and including programming so technical stuff is not always about programming it's also about just using for example linux and docker and being able to configure uh, to, uh configure uh, jenkins or uh, be able to write some simple script to just automate and uh, facilitate your daily work yeah, so it's just technical. It doesn't necessarily mean that that you will become a programmer if you learn some uh, how to do scripting. Yes, so there and actually there are most people who are either programmer or tester. They have a, a different uh, set of a different mindset. Uh, and okay, uh, so please choose what is better for you. So. My opinion, if you think you have a mindset of programmers then you could directly be a programmer. It's not, uh, I don't think it's that complicated. There are a lot of courses uh, about programming. So uh, don't try to, to get into uh, programming through the testing. Yes, but I understand that sometimes 
uh, it is uh, fi financially, I don't know, not so profitable to be a test. And so my opinion is of course a kind of problem because you then have your um, um, ex uh, salary expectation, uh, which you could never achieve perhaps, yes. I don't know what to do. <laughs> Perhaps, yeah, but I hope it will it will change. So in Germany, it's it's already the case. It's not the different. Uh, the salaries are not uh, never never even I think thirty percent different between like a tester with the same uh, same uh, experience and a programmer the same experience could be perhaps ten percent or something. So it doesn't matter that much. Uh, to uh, yes, and in exchange you have a job of your of your dream. Yes, as a tester, you have more overview. So the, the programmers they are much more deeply in, te in technique and uh, um, the testers, they all have uh, the, um, um, uh, the opportunity to see the whole picture because uh, they need it uh, very much uh, in many cases. Yes, they also, uh, I think the typical tester, uh, even test automator, he much communicate uh, uh, much. He must communicate much. If you are not the type of person who uh, likes to talk with other people, perhaps it's not the real job for you. So I know there are some uh, developers who are really quiet person who uh, don't like, who doesn't like to uh, talk to other people. And in some cases, it is fine to be just a person who are. Getting some uh, development stuff or just answering the email, it will probably uh, won't work for you uh, as a tester. Okay. Now. <laughs> Great. Nice Thanks thing. a lot. And yeah, next question is about Radio QA. So you are moderator at Radio QA. So uh, please tell us about uh, this project. And by the way, I want to highlight that uh, last year on April 1st, Radio QA was renamed to Radio QA Armenia and all polls were about testing and Armenia radio. And it was very fun and it was very surprising when in the morning I woke up and uh, my first uh, message, uh, first post in the Facebook was Radio QA uh, changed the profile picture to Radio QA Armenia and it was really uh, fun and it was so cool. So please, uh, can you tell us about uh, the project, uh, what you are doing there and about the podcast that we are doing on Radio QA? And... Mm -hmm. yeah. So of course, of course. Um, so Radio QA was created, I, I think it's already five or six years ago as a, originally as a podcast. Uh, because at that time we didn't have any podcast to to uh, to create topics, and uh, the main idea was and still is uh, not to make uh, actually not to make podcasts about only testing, but to have a podcast. Um, so and um, I will just. Um, say that uh, Radio K is not uh, my podcast, it's podcast of a team of uh, like-minded people who are all actually uh, query related. So they are either tester or test manager or they were one day, uh, so some of them has changed their career a bit, but they were testers at the time being at least. Yes, so we wanted to make a podcast where we testers look at the world and uh, mostly it actually it world um but uh, from our test uh, perspective and uh, with our test experience but we uh, were talking about some very common topics also about programming and soft skills and psychology and vacation and freelance and of course as a tester why not we also talk a lot about about uh, testing so it's not it was uh, not a podcast about anything, um, um, anything, uh, but not testing. That was a podcast about everything in IT uh, with um, um, with testers, with uh, testers as moderators. So I won. I was, and uh, actually I am also, also one of uh, the moderators. And at the beginning, we also have uh, like two weeks, uh, the weekly rhythmos, and we had. Uh, 
recorded a lot of podcasts. Of course, it's difficult to um, to hold uh, up with uh, with uh, yes, uh, that much it takes much time and much work. And now, actually, we don't uh, have uh, our podcast episode that often. But there are still like five to 10 episodes every year. In the last years, we also, uh, we, uh, and we also started, I think it's also uh, like, also like four years, uh, since four years, uh, um, how do they call it in English? Public, um, like public channel on Facebook, also named Radio yeah. Bay, which is mostly, and actually mostly entertainment. Uh, uh, entertainment, QA related, IT related entertainment. We are also trying to make our jokes ourselves. We have very talented, uh, creative people. So many of art, art uh, uh, pictures and texts, uh, we made them uh, ourselves. So, uh, but of course, we also reposting some uh, good jokes from other channels and other people. Okay, so please join us on Facebook. Um, we have already more than 10,000 subscribers, which is pretty much. And uh, of course, so, uh, we're also posting our podcast and some information about the conferences, but uh, uh, the most posts are actually uh, some kind of jokes. Uh, and uh, of course, Telegram is now also the very popular medium. So there is also a channel on Telegram, of course, the name is Radio Cray. Uh, uh, join it if you wish Pre uh, practically the, the same stuff just in uh, as a medium okay and to um, a short explanation to our april 1st joke on uh, i think it was last year um on uh, armenian radio k for those uh, of you who are not as old as me and not armenian what is armenian armenian radio Armenian radio it was i think an old and from Soviet from Soviet times, when uh, political and all uh, I know um, I, I am joking to a social to a social topics was uh, pretty dangerous. Sometimes you could really get yeah. punished for uh, telling some jokes. And Armenian uh, Armenian radio it was like uh, also branding was and uh, i think also there was perhaps some people i hope they were armenian but I, i'm not uh, quite sure it could they could be also uh, around the globe uh, around the uh, around the soviet union at that time yes who very uh, who made some really nice uh, also political joke and jokes on some uh, uh, social uh, social topics and it was, um, uh, yes, uh, for the times, it was quite nice to have so something like this. And um, so uh, we, we thought to merge on first April 1st to match like Radio K and Armenian Radio to Armenian Radio K. We also tried uh, ourselves to write some jokes in the style of this Armenian radio. Uh, they are not, uh, because they actually, it was old Soviet, um, anecdotes and or jokes uh, if you want uh, so they are nowadays they may seem not so funny uh, because now you know there are no more anecdotes there are memes now so the world is changing the, uh, the jokes were uh, uh, relatively old-fashioned but okay we tried our best to to, uh, um, to retain the style of uh, Armenian radio and we also translated I think in Armenian uh, Armenian Radio K, we translated and then put it in Armenian Vita. That was, I think it was fun. Yes, I, I, I am glad you liked it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, for sure. It was fun. And I remember uh, that day uh, all the community was sharing uh, these uh, jokes and was making fun. And also, I remember that many people were contributing also and trying to. Uh, think uh, and uh, send some jokes, say, hey, let's uh, post this joke. And it was uh, really cool and it was really fun. And thanks for that. And yeah, and also I would suggest everyone to listen all podcasts of Radio QA because uh, they are about very cool stuff and 
uh, I remember that one podcast where uh, where me, Tim, and I don't remember, uh, who, and Ruslan, uh, three of us were uh, guests, and we were talking about testing in our countries. It was re uh, really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, Alexei, my last question is my favorite question, and it's about books. And uh, I know that you are reading books a lot because you are playing a game. Uh, what, when, where. So uh, what are your favorite books about software testing? And what would you like to suggest to our audience to read? Actually, I must admit, I'm not reading as much, uh, as many books uh, as I used to nowadays but oh. i've prepared it <laughs> yeah actually yes you uh for a russian famous game uh uh what uh, uh where when что где когда actually you don't uh, yeah you need to have some com uh, common knowledge but it's uh, not necessarily uh um you don't need to to read that much books and it actually it doesn't help to many people because uh, if you're reading books it's not enough you must have a, a very very good memory which i don't have yes because if sometimes there is a question about the book you have read <laughs> it's it's normally it is uh, actually the worst that, that could happen because you are desperately trying to uh, recall what was there in, this, in the place, yes? Uh, instead of trying to uh, think logically and to deduce uh, the answer from the question, because the purpose of the game is not to know everything, but just to, to, uh, to get to it, yes? To try to logically get to it to, uh, using some knowledge. And it's actually bad if you cannot, uh, if you could neither, uh, neither remember it, nor uh, <laughs> you use time effectively to, to think about the question. So don't read, just read books uh, just for it. Okay, but I have some, some books and actually I think uh, reading books must be fun. And actually there are not a lot of books <laughs> which are fun uh, about testing. So I've prepared some books which are not really about testing, but they are very interesting. I think they will help you as a person and as a tester and as a programmer, nevertheless. Yes. So one of, uh, one of my favorite author is uh, Jerry Weinberg, Gerald Weinberg. Uh, he unfortunately passed away, I think, uh, last year. Uh, but uh, he has uh, written a great deal of books in 70s and 80s. And when I was reading them now, um, I've mentioned, okay, nothing has changed. He was really a very great uh, uh, author. So his books uh, are not uh, obsolete uh, even uh, 30, 40 years uh, after they were written, yes? So one of the interesting book about consulting is of course, The Secrets of Consulting. It's also translated, very well translated in Russian and highest uh, secret Malinova Varenia. For those who understand, so they, um, uh, it's very, very good translation. Not every book is uh, English book is translated very well. So I always uh, trying to um, read the original, but this book is translated uh, fine. So because uh, why? Because uh, it's a book uh, full of irony and jokes and very funny con comparisons. So if it wouldn't be good, well translated, I wouldn't never uh, recommend you to read it in Russian. But you can either read it in English or in Russian very well. And the next book that is not as funny, but it's also very uh, interesting and good, Becoming a Technical Leader. So the secrets of consulting is obviously about consulting, real consulting, and this is um, one of my favorite books ever. Becoming a Technical Leader is about becoming a technical leader. Yeah, so it's... Or could be also helpful. So uh, another pair of books uh, would be one is about biases. Um, it is um, the Invisible Gorilla. It's also really fun to to read. Uh, very very nice examples how uh, what you sometimes see and uh, um, listen 
is not is, is what you uh, hear is not what is actually said and what uh, what actually happens yes sometimes you see the things that are not there uh it's in the invisible gorilla by daniel simons and christopher chabri chabris uh and also then really has he has written a couple of interesting books and one i have read is predictably irrational predictably irrational then really uh, Ariel is also a very nice writer um and uh, this uh, all of these uh, four books are really fun fun to read uh it's about uh why the uh, the people are sometimes irrational uh, not only why but how exactly they are irrational and uh, I think it helps. Uh, I think this bunch of books help you to understand why the things you are sometimes reading in books about testing are not the things you are seeing in your uh, working career. Why the people are um, uh, so different from what is uh, actually in in the books. Yes, and I think it's very important to understand it. To get, uh, I know, I don't know, like um, more aligned your life, more aligned with the reality. Yes. Uh, <laughs> okay. And uh, also, I would like to recommend recommend uh, one book of uh, uh, one book on testing, on actually testing, and it's about unit testing. It's also not what we will discuss much uh, today, but uh, pro probably some of you will be interested in unit testing. And I've read this book and it was really fascinating. Of course, it is technical. It is about testing. It's about unit testing. So they are not as fun for everyone. Uh, it is not as fun for everyone as uh, the books I've mentioned uh, before, but it's a very, very good book. And um, uh, my uh, full recommendation, Vladimir Korikov, it's very new. It was written, uh, it was published this year. In, I think in uh, uh, in March or April, unit testing principles, practices, and patterns. It's very the best book on unit testing I've ever read, and I've, I I know. Okay, so if you are interested in unit testing, you must it's a must read. It's actually with examples of uh, C sharp, but the code is really so simple. I think it was also the purpose that you could as a for example java or python programmer you can easy, uh, read it without any problems it's uh, it's the same really the same okay and i think that's it okay of course as a beginner if you are just if you are just curious about uh, testing uh, a, bo a book on or oh, i think it's only in russian but i'm not quite sure uh roman savin um uh, uh, testing dot Com, testing.com testirovania.com testirovania.com okay it's a, a like a classic book it's also it's relatively old but it uh, if you have if, if it, your first uh, uh, acquaintance with testing it uh, also gives some uh, useful basics and it is fun to read it's uh, really easy reading okay and that's it thanks a lot so uh, thanks for recommendations. Yeah, uh, testerunner.com. Uh, uh, it's a very good one. And I'd like to recommend everyone to read, uh, read that one too. Uh, so uh, Natalie Grid is asking, can you give the information of that book? Uh, Nelly, I think you are asking about uh, testerunner.com. So you can just Google it and uh, you can find it easily because uh, so you can find the PDF and download, or you can just uh, buy it even from Amazon. Uh, yeah, and also I would say posted that information in Zoom chat. I'll copy it to uh, the Facebook Live also, so you can uh, take it from there. Yeah. So just, uh, yeah. Just uh, put it in the chat. And I think we could uh, also mention it somewhere in uh, our YouTube video. Or, yes, in uh, description of yeah, the for, uh, video. Yeah, it's for sure. Uh, I'll yeah, and uh, I've posted in Facebook Live chats too. Okay. Thank okay. You. So uh, seems that seems that our webinar is coming to the end. And I'd like to say thank you uh, for your time. Thank you for your 
knowledge sharing with us and it was very cool to host you in our webinar and i hope that one day we can have another webinar and talk about selenids uh, that you can tell us uh, in maybe in examples what is it how it uh, how we can use it and how it's helping all uh, out matters to save time and uh, use some uh, tricks that uh, selenid has okay yeah, yeah. And thank you yeah thank you yeah. very much for invitation for very nice questions thanks really a lot good. and uh yeah yeah really like that <laughs> okay thanks the audience thanks. for listening. yes and thanks a lot yeah each, uh, also see each other one day uh, on on the conference not only in zoom but in armenia i unfortunately missed uh, this year conference because uh, of uh, it was uh, uh, put off the schedule because of Corona, of course. But perhaps next year, I will be glad to come to Armenia. Never, I've never been there. Okay. Yeah, for yeah, for sure. Uh, uh, we'll have your fantastic days conference, and uh, hopefully, we'll see you uh, as a speaker there. And for sure, uh, we'll meet uh, in Armenia. Okay. Okay, uh, thank you everyone. Thanks a lot, Alexey, uh, for the webinar and hopefully see you very soon in uh, other conferences and in other webinars. Have a nice evening and bye-bye. Bye-bye.